Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today we're going to be talking about energy efficiency and how important it is to have clean energy and to help to deal with this problem of climate change. My guest is an expert on this topic. Mr. Jason Baudier is an American international business professional at Schneider Electric, which is a global specialist in energy management. Jason has held a variety of positions and functions on behalf of the company in operations, business development, marketing, and sales management. Currently, he is a corporate ambassador for electrical distribution, communications, technology, sustainability, and innovation. Jason Dodier, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Bill, it's great to be with you. I appreciate you being with me today. We've got a very heady topic and a very important topic. Let's just dive right into it. Schneider Electric. This uh, Schneider Electric is well known in many of the energy circles of the world. It is not a household name, I guess. <laughs> it's maybe not like <laughs> Microsoft or something like that. Tell, tell us a little bit briefly, what is Schneider Electric? When was it formed? Why was it formed? What's its main function? Sure, let's go into it. You said it's not a whole household name. It's funny. I was looking at statistics recently. We are in roughly four out of 10 U.S. households, and we'll talk a little bit of, more about what that means and what Schneider does as we advance the program. But the company's really been around since 1836. And today we say we're a specialist in energy management, but the roots of the company were in iron and steel, heavy machinery and shipbuilding. So the cool thing about 1836 and where we are today is Schneider's literally been around through the progression of industries, you know, let's call it 2.0 to 4.0 today. And when I say 2.0, that's the first industrial revolution. And then you've got 3.0, which was we, the computer era. So early computers and um, you know, technology and acceleration there. And then we find ourselves in this fourth industrial revolution today, Bill, the smart machines, storage systems, cyber and, and internet of things, right? We like to say at Schneider, we put the T in IOT. And really what we do today, our goal is to empower and make the most of our energy and resources. So we believe that technology uh, allows us to bridge progress and sustainability for all individuals. So our, our, our line here, and we call this life is on at Schneider Electric. And what that means, Bill, is we've got a variety of products, services, and software uh, globally. You know, we've got about 140,000 people that are working all over the world in different uh, parts of our business to help drive down the carbon footprint, provide more visibility. And really, when you think about it in three different layers, it's strategize, digitize, and decarbonize. And, and as part of that, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but Schneider's been highly recognized for that, right? Not only has Schneider consistently been named one of the most sustainable companies in the world, but we're showing it through other mechanisms uh, and through other parts of our business uh, day in and day out. And just one last thing I'll say on Schneider, because again, as you said, we we do a lot of things uh, and it's a big company, but it's a company that's got very strong category brands. And what I mean by that is such brands as Square D, Aviva, APC, MGE, ASCO, uh, Luminous. These are some of the companies, Bill, that make up the Schneider Electric portfolio uh, that, uh, that has allowed us to really go out and do the things we've been doing for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you do. When you said Square D, you you rang a you rang a note with me because people who've been involved in construction business or what have you certainly remember that one and, and the others too that you mentioned. Well, let's talk in general terms about you. You mentioned that Schneider affects people in the United States and around the world. Uh, go into a little more detail on how you do that without people ever knowing it, really. Well, well, that's just it, right? So when you think about how we do it today, right? You talked about Square D. So the components we make, we make electrical distribution components, uh, infrastructure components, uh, installation systems, renewable energy systems, and we've gotten very creative. So we've created the, we look at our business today in two halves. We've got our energy management business and our industrial automation business. And what they do, Bill, essentially is uh, on, on the one hand, we go after the en energy transition, and the other is around industry 4.0. So in alignment with what I was talking about in terms of how we've evolved as a society. And when you look at those segments, you've got buildings of the future, you've got homes of the future, 
data centers, right? And, and when you look at these different elements, that's where we really come in and devise plans to come and help uh, scale to meet demands, both of digital lifestyles, be, helping buildings be more intelligent, and really driving a, a hybrid architecture uh, with, with our hardware, software, and service platform. And one thing to note at the center of that, um, Schneider's been a global leader in, in putting together an IoT-enabled plug-and-play platform. It's interoperable amongst these end segments, and it allows consumers and users to see in real time all their connected devices via, via uh, very simplified applications to understand today uh, number one, enhance safety, reliability, efficiency, sust sustainability, and ultimately uh, core connectivity of their business. So uh, that's really how we're set up. We're thinking outside the box. We're embracing new digital technologies, and we're heavily focused on innovation as it relates to electric vehicles, 5G adoption, uh, industrial IoT, and renewable energy. Now, you are a leader in this area of clean energy, energy management and those types of activities. But still today, we run into obstacles. We run into countervailing philosophies, what have you, of people, many of them driven by financial interests of folks in the fossil fuel industry who argue that, we, well, we really can't afford to move into clean energy because we lose so many jobs in the coal mines or whatever the case might be, or we lose so, we'd have to replace the internal combustion engine. How, how do you deal with those arguments? I, you're, you're on solid ground. You're talking about clean energy, energy efficiency, but you, I'm sure you run into this probably every day, do you not? <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's a very frequent occurrence, right? I think what a lot of people don't realize, today we already have more fossil fuels than we can use as a society. There was a, a report last year from the UN that made it clear in order to limit warming to one and a half uh, you know, degrees, we basically need to cut carbon pollution in half by 2030, right? That's soon. So what, what do we do? And, and here's the thing, fossil fuel corporations have discovered roughly five times more oil, gas, and coal reserves that we can afford to burn and still limit to one and a half. So our message is really, it's a three-pronged approach, Bill. It's cut, right? So when we talk to these companies and we look at the opportunities that are out there, you know, slashing emissions is number one, um, conserving and getting more efficient. And, and removing and cleaning up what's left. And you're seeing a lot of this, even from activist investors now in these big oil and gas companies, uh, we're in a very strange environment today. The culmination of everything that's happening, especially with the geopolitical tensions, uh, have made this a topic that is extre extremely dynamic and ever evolving because of the, you know, the, the security aspect. But, but the thing that's important as well for the listeners to understand is when we say right, time, time is up and we need to move fast. It's important to understand like what it means to get to net zero, right? To reduce greenhouse gas emissions and ensure that, you know, any ongoing emissions are balanced by removals and other forms of, uh, you know, technologies that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But the net and net zero is important as well, Bill, because when you think about that, you know, reducing these greenhouse gas emissions and ensuring they're not leaking into the atmosphere over time. For example, when you look at the destruction of forests uh, and the improper removal of carbon dioxide, and we're working, we're seeing more and more, these big oil and gas companies are actually willing to deploy new technologies. They're getting more engaged in renewables. And you know, at top of our discussion today, when we look at you know, the decade of infrastructure that's coming, we need these companies, we need their resources to play a very critical role and help establish baseload uh, technologies and help ensure that we've got the right level of security. And, and there's many, many ways that we can leverage their workforce to help us be much more effective and efficient so that the state of global warming stops. And when you were talking about this, uh, well, the, the whole situation where we've had this situation where the earth is deteriorating, the, the environment is deteriorating quite dramatically. And it brought to mind just two events just recently. One, we, we read more and more about the lungs of the earth. The Amazon forest is on the verge of collapse. And if that forest, if that, that rain basin goes, we've got severe problems because we lose part of the lungs of the earth. And the other, of course, we see this tragedy is taking place in Ukraine. And it just, to me, it highlights how countries should be energy independent and they should not be dependent upon folks in other parts of the world, be it the Middle East or be it Russia or wherever it might be, 
to maintain their societies and to provide a decent quality of life and standard of living. But those two events seem to have just brought it home even more dramatically, have they not? They, they absolutely have, and that's why for us, when you think about what we're trying to do and, and drive towards energy independence, you hit on two very important po points. One is the nature-based type solutions, right? And this will help drive, uh, and, and it's different in, in, in all markets, but in, in that range, Bill, you've got soil carbon management. We have to preserve that. You've got mango, mangroves and blue carbon and ocean-related solutions uh, and anything else that you could consider a nature-based solution. And we have to leverage uh, funding resources and commitments of, of groups like the UN and the Sustainable Development Compacts to go into these countries and help give them access to energy and resources. That was when I lived in the Middle East and Europe during my time with Schneider, that was a big thing we did in emerging markets was to go in and help them uh, with not only the education to be aware of the new energy landscape, but providing the technology. And the other end of it, you know, is the techno sequestration type stuff that you know, we see it more and more in Europe, direct air capture, bioenergy, mineralization, enhanced weathering. So it's up to us as, as leaders and companies like ours, uh, both private and nonprofit, to be going into countries like this and providing that level of support. Otherwise, things can fall apart and, and unwind very rapidly, both at a localized level and, of course, globally. Everybody is impacted in one way or another. It is one global vis village. We are interdependent and independent to some degree, but completely interdependent in other degrees. And it's absolutely important that we cooperate on this. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra-campus television hookup, or you have a podcast, or you just have a computer, you like our shows and you would like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided at no cost as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today, we are talking to an expert in the area of energy management, and this issue is so critically important. Jason Dodier is an American international business professional at Schneider Electric, which is the global specialist in energy management. Jason, I, I, we could, like I said, we could spend hours and hours on this. <laughs> you mentioned a minute ago the, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to eliminate poverty, to eliminate hunger, to empower women and, uh, well, girls, to promote sustainable development, to have sustainable cities, develop clean energy. How important are those, I guess, all 17 really tie into what you're doing, do they not? They, they absolutely do, right? And this is, we're, we're, we set really the benchmark many years ago when we created a planet and society barometer to try to align around these goals. And it's only gotten tighter over time, right? So if you think about the collective 17 goals from the, the sustainable development uh, in the UN, right? And, and, and you break it down, and I, I like to synthesize it. First and foremost, at the beginning, what are, what are businesses doing? And I'm going to speak about it from a business perspective for a minute because that's, you know, we work for a, a very large multinational. You got to act for a climate positive world, right? And, and what does that mean? Continually investing uh, in and developing innovative solutions that can deliver lasting results. The second, you know, the, the secondary piece to that, right? Being efficient with resources, living up to principles of trust, creating equal opportunities. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit more because I have a lot to say on diversity, equity, inclusion. And you know, it was International Women's Day this week. So there was a lot of things we did as a company around that. And I'm happy to share some ideas and thoughts. Um, but also, you know, if you think about harnessing the power of all generations, we're going through, uh, I, I like to say, we were, I was in a meeting a couple of weeks ago. So a bit of a silver tsunami in the fact of, you know, people in, in the pandemic has accelerated the shift or retiring at rap, rapid rates. Uh, we've got economies, uh, that are looking to get up to speed on the latest technologies and join, you know, join in this effort. So what can we do to foster learning, upskilling, and development for each generation so that we could essentially pave the way for the next, right? That's the basis of what we need to do here, especially, especially as 2050 
uh, comes closer and closer and we're falling further behind our commitments and then empowering local communities, right? I talked about this a little with our access to energy program, you know, and this is a big part of what Schneider does is getting out there, enabling individuals and partners to make sustainability a reality for all. So when I think about those broad 17, these are kind of the synthesis of some of the core areas where we're working. And one thing that I'm really proud of is, you know, when you think about our partnerships and the work we're doing with the UN, you know, our CEO, Jean-Pascal Tricot, he's on the board of the UN Global Compact. And this is a group of the world's largest corporate, uh, you know, corporations that go after sustainability initiatives, right? They focus, Bill, to your point, on environment, social, and governance. Uh, in such areas as supply chain, right? We'll talk about that, sustainable finance, and ultimately, how do they integrate their company strategies and plans with the UN sustainability goals? And, you know, I watched one of your recent sessions with uh, Jan Janet Salazar and, and me as well, being based as an employee of a company here in New York City. How do we personally, individually get more involved with the UN? So this is a, it's a great topic and it's something that, that we are watching and engaging in and have been engaging in for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad you mentioned the Global Compact. It's an extremely important operation within the United Nations. And I've interviewed just a wide range of leaders on the global of the Global Compact over the years. And our viewers, if they'd like more on that, they can go to globalconnectionstelevision.com. Well, Jason, we're going to run out of time. I can see that right now, but let's, <laughs> you made a good entree into DEI, diversity, equity, and integration. What, what are you doing in that area that you'd like to accentuate or put out right now? Yeah, look, for me, right, you will never know the capacity of a business or a society without harnessing everybody's collective strengths, interests, and passions. This creates a greater team value and it unleashes human magic. And I'm proud to say that at Schneider, our corporate sustainability impact goals really embody this. And there's two that I want to call out, right? There, there's one that we call equal. And what equal is, it's increasing gender diversity in our hiring, our frontline management, and our leadership teams. And we have goals of where we want to get by 2025, and I'm proud to say we are ahead of schedule there. Um, another part of equal is providing access to green electricity to 50 million people. Um, the other one I want to highlight is generations. So as part of generations, we want to double hiring opportunities for our interns, apprentices, and fresh graduates, and then train people in energy management. I mean, to date, some stats that I'll call out, we're at 31% female representation um, in terms of our North America territory leadership team. We launched the Hispanic Professional Disability Accessibility and Allies and Asian Professionals uh, and Employee Resource Networks. Um, we've, we've really accelerated the hiring of Black professionals. Um, we went from 17%, you know, it's been 4% growth year over year, 17% to 21% uh, in 2022. Uh, and and that's that's where we're headed towards in 2022 is 21 percent, um, and we're tr and we've built more trust built in the community through the launch of our transparency report, and we continue to be one of the most attractive employers, uh, certified great place to work, and and we have a program called Go Green in the City, right, where we essentially work with and enable um, young students across the world to enter projects and have a chance to to really make an impact. And, and get jobs afterwards with Schneider Electric. So there's a lot of great things we're doing across the board as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion that make me proud after 14 years to be part of this uh, this company. Well, it's it's a very noble goal and all companies should have it. Every every company out there dealing in the energy area or companies not in the energy area, you come right down to it, should first of all, take a look at the United Nations 17 sustainable goals and see how they tie into their operations and to their mission statements and that type of thing. And they will benefit from participating in this. And we see there are literally tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of companies and millions, if not billions of people around the world that are working to help achieve these sustainable development goals by 2030. Now, COVID has set us back a bit, but we're still Hopefully we'll move forward on this. Well, Jason, we're just about out of time and I hate to do this, but uh, the last two or three minutes, uh, let me just give you the floor and talk about <laughs> any, anything you would like to talk about, anything within the, the company or any philosophy that you may have or any of the technologies that you see that are out there that we need to be aware of. Yeah, it, it, look, it's a great point. And we could talk a lot about some of the end segments. The big ones, just to make your viewers aware, the areas we need to focus, power and grid, water, ports and airports, semiconductors, 
federal, you know, looking and helping our federal government e-mobility. For us, it's really about how do we expand the core of our business? How do we get into adjacencies? Think about adjacencies like energy as a service. So designing, building, owning, operating microgrids. You know, we are, we are big on being at the fringe of energy management and then leveraging software and services, right? To become, um, to really become more innovative, creative and provide real-time insights. One thing that I think Bill will be interesting for your listeners is the prosumer play as well. And, and this is basically anybody that can proactively participate in the energy value chain, right? And what that means is, again, leveraging the Schneider Electric consulting services and products to help you become more energy independent and aware of what's happening. I mean, this is an area I can't emphasize. We've doubled down in a very, very big way because we know to achieve where we need to go, to, to where we need to go as a society. And if net zero is our overarching goal here, We've got to electrify transportation. We've got to decarbonize the grid. That's the biggest area for improvement, replacing fossil fuels with solar, wind, and other zero emission sources. Um, you know, we've got to restore our carbon-rich soil and use better fertilization practices. We've got to protect nature, right? And then we've got to clean up uh, all the gigatons in manufacturing, right? Sp specifically, uh, cement, steel, and other areas there. So, um, you know, at Schneider Electric, we are committed, right? We're committed to provide and play a big role in leadership uh, around sustainability and the climate challenge that is in front of us today. We have all the tools and services at our disposal to connect uh, the end-to-end -end situation from consulting through to the end game. And the last thing I wanna highlight is, and you and I talked about it briefly uh, a couple of weeks ago, is innovation. What other investments are we making? I mean, Schneider Electric has a major venture fund. We're constantly looking to enable and embolden new technologies that are out there. So I encourage people to reach out. Uh, for example, I'm part of a new incubation project here at Schneider Electric to accelerate decarbonization, working with the voluntary carbon offset market and how to leverage this impact to drive down, uh, you know, to drive down climate change. So that's another big thing that not a lot of people realize. Corporate ventures are taking off. And this is how we enable and open the doors for people all over the world to play a role in decarbonization and having an impact around the world. So that's really what I wanted to highlight, Bill. Like I said, you and I could talk for hours about this, but the need to act is clear, it's urgent, and we need to execute at a high level if we're gonna make the impact we need. First, cutting 50% by 2030 and 100% by 2050. There is no time to waste. We have to move forward immediately because really we have no planet B. There is no backup planet we have to save this one. We're not going to move to Mars. We're not going to move anyplace else. We've got to save this planet. And these are some logical, practical, constructive ideas on how we can do that. Well, Jason Dodier, I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Thank you so much, Bill. Looking forward to the next one. My pleasure. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.